All right, we are ready to talk about our fourth and fifth projects that are options for you. Project four is doing your own research study. So in Education 504, you learned about the components of a research study where you start off with your purpose statement, you define your variables, then you do a lit review about your topic, then you decide on a methodology and you have a methodology section, you collect your data, then you have a data analysis results section and a conclusion. So you may choose after doing 504 and saying, yeah, I'd really like to do my own study. You got a little bit of a taste of it through the quantitative and qualitative analyses. So if you'd like to do a research study, this is the project for you. Now, you also learned about the different um, research designs. So obviously in a 10 week term, you can't do a developmental study or um, one that's going to take you a long time, but you could do an action research study, you could do a case study, you could do a descriptive study, you can do an ex post facto study. So I've had students compare, uh, for example, a PE teacher did uh, actually did um, a quasi experimental study where he taught a sport for like a six week period using one methodology a new way of teaching, I think it was soccer, and then the other class didn't get that, they got a traditional way, and then he compared um, both their skills and their knowledge to see if the new way of teaching soccer made any difference. So once again, you'll see a lit review, 15 sources as a minimum, and if you want to do this, I need you to get started on it right away because with the research study, the part that takes the longest amount of time is collecting the data. So if you don't like to write, this is actually a good option for you because out of all of these projects, the research projects tend to be the shortest in terms of the written amount because a lot of your energy goes into the data collection and you present your findings through using tables or charts, that kind of thing. And then finally, we have an evaluation study. An evaluation study is really a specific type of research project. And what you're going to do if you choose this one is looking at um, an activity, a procedure that is already going on that's in your field of interest. And then you're going to design an evaluation for it complete the evaluation, and then also look at analyzing, all right, is this activity or process working well? Why? Why not? What would be um, your recommendations based on the findings of your evaluation study? So this is a good one to do if, for example, your school site has implemented a new curriculum or Maybe they've just started with PBIS, or maybe they've started a year or two ago, and you want to see, is this working well? So oftentimes, we kind of talk about the flavor of the month in education. Hey, let's jump on this bandwagon, and we're off with some new way to teach phonics or some new behavior plan, and we never really go back and analyze if it's having the results that we want. So this is when you would do an evaluation study. So how do you choose? How, what do you need to get started? What you have to do is first think about a topic and issue a problem that you are passionate about. We have no shortage of problems in education, but some of the problems I personally am not interested in. It's not my area of passion or interest. So any of these five projects that you choose it is going to be a labor of love, so to speak. So it has to be something that you're interested in. After you choose that, and if you're not sure, I'm hoping your lit review from Education 504 uh, is guiding you in the right direction. But if you did that lit review and you're like, nope, I just wasn't as interested in it as I thought I was going to be, that's okay. But 
Jot down, make a list of the things that you're passionate about in education. If somebody said that to me, I would say I'm passionate about bilingual education. I'm passionate about cooperative learning. I'm passionate about working with English learners. I'm passionate about teaching in a way that's engaging. I'm passionate about educating the whole, the whole student. Um, I'm passionate about hands-on learning, all of those types of things. So you can make a list and then when you look at your list, think about, so which type of the five projects fits with that? Is it that I want to learn more about that? Then I'm probably going to do one of the lit surveys. Is it that I'm passionate about this and we don't have resources or I already have a lot of knowledge and I want to share that with others? Then I probably want to do a creative project. Is it that I have a lot of questions about whether something is working or not? Then I probably want to do the research project or the evaluation study. Then what you're going to do is you're going to submit a written proposal to me that sounds formal. It's not that formal, but it's going to have two things. Give me one sentence about which of the five projects you're going to choose. And then what is your specific topic? And then give me a short paragraph describing the rationale or the need for this project. I really want you to think through it because remember, your project is contributing to the field of education. We want it to be something that's worthwhile not only for you, but also for other educators because when we can share our hard work, it makes everybody's job a little bit lighter. So I've given you two sample proposals right there to guide you. And when you email that to me, I will email you back and say, sounds great, go ahead and get started. Or sometimes people give me a very, very narrow topic and I'll say, let's branch it out a little bit. I'm worried that you're not going to find enough. Or sometimes they say, I want to study autism. That's huge. So I'll say, let's narrow it down. What specifically about autism, in what population, that kind of thing. All right, and then once you get the green light from me, you want to go ahead and start working on it right away. The next part of the syllabus has the outline for each of the five projects. You'll notice on this one it's for both um, Lit Surveys A and B. So you have a cover page, you have an abstract, and then you have these different sections. And you can use this as your heading for that section. So you can just put the problem. And then I've given you an estimated amount of pages that that section needs. This is an estimate. I don't want you filling it up with Hamburger Helper if it's not quite there. But if you do all of these things in half a page, you probably haven't covered it enough. And then don't worry if you go over, that's fine too. So this can be... Um, your overall heading and then these can be subheadings. You can set it up kind of however you want but I want to see these things and people always ask about what does it mean the scope of the literature review? That refers to when you're looking at, let's just stick with autism, are you looking at studies that only deal with that in the United States? Are you looking at it from an international perspective? Are you looking at it from a certain age range? So basically, it's who, who is being um, discussed in your lit review. All right, so it's giving the parameters of that. Then you can see section two is the lit review. That's the main bulk of your paper. And you can see the estimated page value there as well. There is an introduction here. Think of this introduction as an giving the almost like a topic um, paragraph to set the stage for what you're going to be covering in your lit review. Then this introduction, there might be a little overlap, but it's specifically discussing the lit review portion. And then the final section is your conclusions. And if you do choose lit survey A, that's where you're going to do your implications. And then if you choose uh, Lit Survey B, that's where you're going to take a position. And then you finish it up with your reference list. Also, you'll notice that some things have asterisks there. 
Remember from the previous video I said to you that to get an in-progress grade at least 60% needs to be done. So that would be then section one and half of section two. I'm not going to go through every single one of these because I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, but you can look through those and then ask me if you have any questions. I will just mention on the creative project that the actual project is an appendix. So what people normally do is all of these first sections up through the reference list is one document and then the project is a separate one. And then you'll see the same for the research project. And notice those sections mirror what you would find in a research study. Makes sense, right? And then you have the evaluation study as well.